Special thanks to all our patrons who support the show every single week. We couldn't do it without you. Head over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today for bonus content, exclusive happy hour live chats and more. Patrons, you help keep the run, eat, drink podcast going. And we're so grateful for you. Not a patron yet? Join us today at patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast. Help support the show by using our Amazon affiliate link. Anytime you shop on Amazon for running gear, food, beverages, or anything else the little gray trucks might bring your way. Just use runeatdrink.net slash Amazon anytime you shop. It costs nothing extra. It's only one extra click, and it helps us keep the lights on and the bandwidth flowing. Just go to runeatdrink.net slash Amazon, and we thank you for your support. Hi, everyone. It's Mevka Flesgehi, the Boston Marathon, New York City Marathon champion and Olympic silver medalist. And you are listening to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, you'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. Hey, welcome to episode 252 of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast, year number seven. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. Lucky number seven and a palindrome episode. I love how you point that out each time we hit a palindrome episode, 252. I get to do same, it every 10 episodes. Same forward, same backwards. This seems to bring you joy. For so. some reason it does. <laughs> and this episode is just filled with joy for me. It hits close to my heart. And I think longtime listeners will know why. Oh, absolutely. That this week, we're going to be talking about the 10th anniversary of Richard's Father's Day family walk jog for Moffat in Tampa. And this is a race mm. that we've covered for several years here on the show. And this year, it has extra special meaning for us. Very. Like you said, longtime listeners Very. to the show know that well, your dad has been undergoing yes. treatment at Moffitt Cancer Center this year. Mm -hmm. And we've had amazing results yes. from that treatment. So mm -hmm. this one hits home. It does. And I, I don't mean just longtime listeners. No. Listeners who have joined the Runcation Nation in the last year and who have been following our journey know about my dad's diagnosis last April, May, and it was stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and did a round of chemo, got excellent care here at Florida Cancer Specialists here in town. And they are connected to Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa. And Moffitt has a reputation for being on the cutting edge of treatment. A very well-deserved reputation, might I add. They actually talked about some of the treatment that your dad got at mm -hmm. the race that morning. Indeed. And we're talking science fiction-y type stuff here. And to be able to support <laughs> yes. a, a medical research hospital that is doing this work mm -hmm. and, and giving so many people hope, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And the fact that Richard Gonsmart... It has hosted this race for the last decade and has achieved what he has achieved as a cancer survivor himself and yes, has achieved what he's achieved in terms of fundraising for Moffitt. I think it's just a, a phenomenal event and we can't wait to tell you guys all about it. Yeah. Once the running is done, however, we're going to be talking about a special Father's Day themed lunch that we had at the host restaurant for the race. We can't say no to you, Laylee. And I really have to say, thank goodness they could get us in for that 
special Father's Day menu. I'll tell you what, the hardest day of the year to book for a restaurant is Mother's Day. Father's Day is no slouch. Oh, it was, I, I was shocked that we were able to get in. To, have you looked up stats on that? Is it Mother's Day, Father's Day, and then like maybe Valentine's Day? I, or, I don't or, think or Father's is Day it is like number New two. Year's? I don't, I don't think know. Father's Day is number two. I haven't looked it up, but I know that Mother's it's Day tough. is the hardest. Yeah. Thank you very much to Tim Shackton for helping us with that. Yeah. It's getting us into you lately. I am very excited for the food offerings we're going to talk about. And for the drink portion of this week's show, we're bringing it back to coffee. Oh, we are. We are. And this one is a local chain, as it were, in Florida, Buddy Brew. Yeah. At and, Armature Works. And we've been meaning to get to Buddy Brew for almost two years. Mm -hmm. And we finally had the opportunity to do so. And it didn't disappoint. So. That's a recommendation from a patron of our show, John, John Schroeder. Schroeder. Absolutely. So shout out to him for that. Yeah. So we have a lot to talk about on this week's show. But before we get to those things, you have managed to scour the internet far and wide. You say scour, but I, I And look tried. at our social media feed yeah. throughout the day, every day to find out I who try. in I the try. Runcation Nation I try. Needs a shout out. Dawn won our drawing for father for the Richards Father's Day walk walk and jog tenth anniversary, but she could not. She was unable to attend. But shout out to her. She is streaking with the cool kids, having movement every day, mm -hmm. and posting gorgeous pictures in her Runny Drink podcast gear. So that's one that I want to say. And we were sorry to miss her at the race. But also, gosh, Babs, who is somebody that we met as part of the Donna Marathon weekend. She is a Destination Marathons ambassador. And we've had Mark Janik on our show, the founder what of a Destination cool, Marathon. Yeah, what a cool company. For those of you that love runcationing, not sponsors of the show yet, Mark, mm -hmm. but uh, check them out. If For you're sure. looking to do some unique races in some really cool places, Destination Marathons, they and are. Just have all the details handled right exactly. for you. Exactly. So congratulations to Babs on State 24 and Grandma's Half Marathon. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, we hear, she's halfway there. We hear, we hear great things. We have. About that, Grandma's Marathon. That's one of we those can. that's on the list. Yeah. We got to check that one out. So we will add it to the list. Maybe she will grace us, come on and recap it for us. Who knows? Ooh, a runcation recap. Right? That would be nice. Yes. We also want to congratulate Emily O'Keefe for completing the Grand Quad Challenge from Vacation Races. She is another one that is just, she has fame, Runcation Nation fame, mm. doing the Dopey Challenge and then turning around and doing the Donna Booby Trap Challenge Marathon Edition. As one does. Awesome. <laughs> she has no quit. No, none. And she is just. And apparently no pain receptors because I would be <laughs> so sore. So would I. <laughs> but she is doing it. Uh, yes. And it's great. So. Congratulations, Emily. And if you would like a shout out for you or someone you love on the show, do us a favor. Send us an email to info at runeatdrink.net. That's info at runeatdrink.net. Or call us and leave us a message at 941-677-2733. That's 941-677-2733. You do that so well, I've sir. practiced. Well done. Shall we talk running? Let's talk running. Or in this particular case, this year, we've done this race on the show a couple of times. Yes. And this year, it had a little bit of a different feel. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was two years ago. I did the I did this race as the culmination of the run, walk, run training. Do, doing, I actually walked people through the training process over, I think, six weeks. Yes. And I was doing it as a series of live streams. And that was the race I chose to do. My, it was my race. And what my, interval my did you do? Do you remember? Off the top of my head, I want to say I, I did a 1050. Yeah. Like a one to five ratio, 10 seconds running, 50 seconds walking. Great. And that, 
it was weird because this race course, we're going to talk about some of the particulars of all of it, but broad strokes, it's an out and back course that takes you right along the Tampa river walk downtown. It's beautiful. And there, uh, there is usually a breeze coming off the water that really helps in the summer months. Yeah. But this is not what you would consider a very fast 5k generally speaking. Yeah. You're not. There's what? a lot of, there's a lot of people with dogs, a lot of people with, with strollers Families. and they tend to be in the back. They're not interfering if you're setting out to run. But this year, it had a decidedly more group walk feel. And there were groups, local groups that had custom T-shirts for their organization were or there for more their... Than, yeah, yes. I, were there more this year than mm-hmm. we've seen previously? Yes. Okay, because it felt like that. And mm-hmm. I wasn't sure... And I'm glad you said something about that because I, it, it, and I'm not saying this as a negative at all. It was just like, wow, this is more crowded and it feels like more groups have gotten together to do this as a group walk. I got a sense of, we hear Jeff talk about the Kaiser Permanente kind of corporate walk or corporate races that are in Atlanta and it seeing those groups and they could, they, I don't really I was just so focused on enjoying the moment with our crew yeah, and the course and just soaking up all the gratitude that I feel. So I really wasn't paying attention to names on shirts. So I apologize for that. But I just did. They had group there. It just seemed like families were together. Groups from either community organizations or businesses. Offices. Yeah. Yes, we're together. Fundraising groups. I'm going to take a stab at it. Or, yeah, just people that wanted to support, yeah, Moffitt. And, okay. Come together for that. So let's give everybody kind of, a, like I said, broad strokes. Mm-hmm. Begins and ends at Ulele, which is located on kind of the far end of the river walk down near the Armature Works. And Which is like an indoor. It's an indoor grown up food, food court. court. And we'll get to that when we a little bit later on in the show. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, but to give people an idea of like the landmarks. Locations, yeah. This is a, a restaurant with a beautiful outdoor courtyard, like a lawn. And True. a lot of the pre-race events take place there. Race parking is actually in the restaurant parking lot. Great. It's very nice that they have it. It's a fenced in parking lot. I will say this year, the race finally outgrew the parking. It depends on how early you get there now. So that's a tip because of the success with a shout out to Michael Kilgore, who puts this race together every year, even though he has officially retired retired from the company. Yeah. From the Columbia restaurant group. He just has a passion for it. Yeah. and And he does a phenomenal job. But they have a fenced-in parking lot for the mm-hmm. restaurant. It has an attendant. Yes. That parking lot filled up. Yes. We got there about 30, 45 minutes early. Maybe 7, 30. The race start was 8. We were there we by were 7, 7, 15, 7, 30. Yeah. And I ended up dropping Amy off. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, you go on in, do packet pickup and all that. I'm going to go find parking. I parked in a pay lot that was equidistant so it was not too far. It, it was no less far in terms of distance from the race start. The only difference was I had to pay for parking there. No, not a big deal. Plenty of it. So again, great event location to do yes. something like this. The scary part of the whole thing, though, was and, and Richard even mentioned it in his. Oh, the weather. Yes. Yes. Early, his early in remarks. the morning. I think you were awakened by lightning, weren't you? Mm hmm. Early, early in the morning, I want to say two or three in the morning, it was just coming through because we went up and we always like to make a kind of a little short weekend runcation of it. So our dogs got to spend an overnight at their favorite place. Yeah, they had a spa day at their they had a spa at the day at the, at the boarding. Our vet, shout out to Chiquita Animal Hospital, mm-hmm. fantastic people there. And take good care of our babies. They do. So we were up there at staying at Hilton, and anybody who knows us knows we we love comfort food, grilled cheese. We shout out to Pint and Brew that fueled us the night before. Yep. With great pasta and also grilled cheese and soup. So it, but we went to bed with that and 
tremendous thunderstorms, so much so that they weren't even sure the race, the family walk jog was going to happen. Apparently it cleared out just ahead of sunrise. Just in time, just in time. And it was an interesting, it's a, it happens here in Florida a good bit. You'll have horrible thunderstorms, a break, and then more will come in later on. And that's exactly what happened. And there was a Throughout fear. Throughout the state, actually, all the way from, really from Orlando to Miami, we had horrible thunderstorms that day. And I was fearing that it would stop and then start again in the middle of the whole thing. Oh, yeah. But we were not. lucky. We were very lucky. And so we when you went to go find the parking and you came back, I just really want to say the Tampa Bay Bucks were there. They are literally the first people that greet you coming onto the property. Mm -hmm. Buccaneers cheerleaders were there. Love it. I think I got a picture with the mascot and it was just great to see them that the weather cleared up so that they could be out there and they they were in the same place where normally you could valet park if you're eating at that restaurant. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then they had their big bus there really class act. It's mm -hmm. just, they normally have like a, like some sort of a setup there with like an inflatable for the kids to like throw, do a precision throwing of a football. And teach, and they'll teach them and have them do it and take photo ops with it. I don't think they set it up this time. I think they were fearful. Of the, because of the weather. But it was great to have them greet nonetheless. Yes. And that was really cool. Transition to that. And I really liked that all the local mascots were there. Local television station, radio. I just, you could get pictures. I think a member of the Runcation Nation might have gotten a picture with a mascot, a reluctant picture, just, but <laughs> none, nonetheless, very nice, very nice. And of course, the Rough Riders are there. <gasps> Fantastic. They provided the sound for the kind of mourning for the singing of the anthem, the presentation of the flags, and the opening remarks from Richard from two representatives from Moffitt as well. Yeah. A lot of people don't know the connection to, of Tampa to Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. And that's that. Fantastic. Roosevelt you just ordered a the, book, I, didn't you? I just got the selected writings of Teddy Roosevelt. It's Love a, that. a book called uh, The Man in the Arena. And that's a nod to one of his famous quotes where he talks about the critic does not count. It's the man in the arena who's taking the slings and arrows. And it's a yeah. he was a prolific writer, an, an amazing human being. And he launched his escapades with the Rough Riders from Tampa. Such and great little historical tidbits. Sites around Tampa Love are it. named for him or have a historic plaque that talks about the Rough Riders did this here. It's neat to see the organization has persisted. And in the modern incarnation, it's more about community service. Didn't we get a fellowship. couple of those plaques along the run walk course? Uh, the you, running jogging. You very well may have. Yeah, there's so many plaques along the river walk because you have the donor plaques that are out there as well. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, but I didn't stop to read, so I don't know. And there are some who's who kind of statues. And Busts, then there yeah. are quotes. Yes. Along the river walk, which I think they're built into the river walk, but then also the Columbia Restaurant Group, which is comprised of, and help me if I miss any, so it's the Columbia, Eulalie, Casa Santa Stefano. Cha-Cha Coconuts. Goody, goody goody. Did I miss anything? We might have. Apologies if we missed anything, but it is an amazing group, and there were quotes that they actually like race signs yes all yeah, along yeah. the course that, motivational really ones cool. i think they did that last year they did and i like that they brought it back I do too. and all week this week normally i post like a motivational quote about life or running or anything like that in our social media feeds on facebook and instagram at runny drink podcast and also on twitter at runny drink pod mm -hmm. i'll and this week it's coming is all those race signs yeah. that they had just wonderful little motivational tidbits, learning moments for parents and kids, just, just wonderful. Yeah. Such, it had such a family feel, such a good feel. And so I was really glad the weather cooperated and all of those people 
from the community organizations could come out like like the Buccaneers, like the what the Bolts and who else did we have the mascots from the various Tampa teams? Yeah, the Rowdies. The, yeah, the Rays. Now I missed out on and the Rough Riders just having and they're there. not a they're not a they're mascot. not a, not a mascots but and then the communities yeah community community organization yeah now I missed out on the pre race really because by the time I dropped you off I went and parked I it came was, back you had already done bib pickup and it was shirts. great and I will tell you this I really hope they keep this going forward if it's possible I do know the restaurant has a lot to do to prep and set up for Father's Day. So what I really liked about this, and Dana doesn't know anything about it, so I'm just going to keep on talking, right? I came in and I was greeted by the Tampa Bay Bucks. I then came down. And normally in years past, we would have the race organizers, volunteers, everybody check us in outside and ask for our confirmation, give us bibs, t-shirts, take care of all of that, and on-site registration outside near some of the Native American kind of art, statues, sculptures, things like that. But because of the rain, I feel like they moved it inside the restaurant Oh, okay. Because I didn't even see the tents. Yeah. I was like, "Where?" Because first did you of all, get this the, throughout the ten years, through throughout every year that we've done it, we've had access to it, the restrooms inside of Ulele, which I think is outstanding. That is really nice. But also that they've moved it inside. They had. They just had. There are benches. There are booths built into the wall, and that's as you come in on the left-hand side. So they had everybody by alphabet of last name broken up. And that is where they distributed bibs and t-shirts. So it was, they should keep that. It was just, it was so spread out. You didn't have to wait in line too long. It was just, it was really nice. And I'm sure that they, the race organizers, volunteers really a, the people working the race really appreciated the AC in the humidity after the storm. Oh, sure. Absolutely. The shirt, I was surprised that the shirt was long sleeve, but I really liked that. As long as it's a tech shirt. And it is a tech shirt. Which it is. Mm -hmm. I don't mind long sleeves. It's when I get a long sleeve cotton shirt that I'm like, "Mm." I can't wear it when I'm training. I can't show it off at another race. Marketing people, marketing. (laughs) I have deleted all (laughs) cotton from my race training shirts. It's just, (laughs) you cannot do it. It's a rookie mistake. But no, the shirt. They did a really nice job with the shirt again the last couple of years. The shirts have been really good. I really like this one because it is a unique color of blue. It's a lighter blue. And it had a waffle pattern, which I really have loved ever since we got the pink. I got the pink one. And then you got the other one had the waffle pattern for you. It did. From the Gate River Run. Yep. The year we did the Gate River Run and the green. It's monster. a very it's a very light yeah. uh, material. Great and for like Florida. you said, it's got that waffle weave in mm-hmm. it. And uh, yeah, very comfortable. And I think this one was really simple with sponsors on it on the back and then a quote about one person being able to make a diff, which mm-hmm. is inspiring from Moffat. So I really like the shirts, the bibs. I just don't I don't think and FYI, the bibs, not chi- this is not a chip timed event. The bib no. is basically just for you to show off that you're in the race. Oh, so that maybe they could get that. you at the water stop along because there's one water stop along the river walk at the turnaround point mm-hmm. and just so that the volunteers who are out there directing you because it's not just the 5K distance, it's also the one mile or the dog walk jog. And you have to remember that the river walk is a linear park and it's wide open to the public still. Mm-hmm. So it is a mixed use tr- trail, even mm-hmm. though it's all paved. Or t- I should say it's tiled. It's not really pavement. And you, it's not a trail you, run. It's not a trail run, you know? no. But you may be sharing that space with runners who are not part of the race, right. people on bicycles, skateboards, rollerblades, whatever. Mm-hmm. So things to keep in mind. 
so th- that went really well. Amy hands me the shirts. I run them back to the car because we didn't want to change shirts. We get back for the announcement yes. before the uh, before the race. Yes. Yeah, so the Rough Riders provided the great sound system as always. And Richard came up to the mic and you can just tell his passion is so real and his connection to Moffat is just his doctor was there yeah, <laughs> from his treatment. And Michael just came to he spotted us, Michael Kilgore, and he said, hey, there's a big announcement coming. I just want you to like make sure you get and I and I hope to put little tidbits out on our social media feed this week. Oh, good. After we post the episode. But Richard had some pretty inspiring remarks and and to tell us that it in the last 10 years they've raised a pretty big amount. This year, $100,000 for Moffat in a single year. In a single year and over the past 10 years the total hit with this year 1 million. That's, and that's fantastic. It's phenomenal. I can just I can remember being at Moffitt and going with my father for different to different parts when we were up there in February for his treatment mm-hmm. and seeing the a uh, Gonsmart family waiting area. Yeah. And just to know that the the doctor, the head doctor came up and had some some words to say and it was he said there there's just some cutting edge treatment that they are able to provide because of support like this yeah like the treatment that my dad received yeah the and the when i said science fictiony type stuff i mean <laughs> talking about Treatments where they take your own white blood cells and reprogram them and put them back in you to fight cancer. And like the doctor said, Mm. he said they stay in your body for years. Yeah. So this is offering long-term cures. Recovery. Recovery and 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 full quality of life. Fighting that that disease. That's what people want. Mm -hmm. And, And to have a place here in Florida... With a within a two hour drive of us, mm-hmm. and that's accessible to anybody yes. that is doing this really Star Trekish kind of medicine. Really, that's that's bringing the the capital F future to today. That mm. is that's pretty incredible. So um, it means a that lot. Was a huge announcement. Clearly, it means a lot to us, and we are so thrilled that they have done that. And we we had to come back, and we were so thankful that Michael Kilgore reached out to us and said, "Hey, come on up, come on up, and, and bring we, some people, and bring some people." And he provided race entries for us to give away. Yeah. So we did some giveaways, and we actually registered and paid our fees because I wanted that to go to Moffitt. Sure. And. And leave those four. Like I said during the shout outs, Dawn was fierce in sharing. Dawn Brassard. She was. Yes, she Dawn was a Be machine. Joyful. She was instrumental in getting the word out there mm-hmm. and tagging people and just special thanks to her. She actually won and then could not come, but. We had people join our team, and I think this is the biggest team that we had to date at this race. At yes. this race, uh, it was it was very nice. We had we had Kelly and her son Aiden come up, yes, and, and she, do the race. She had all of her kids with her, but but only Aiden did the race. Yeah, he's the runner. He's the runner in in the crew, and she was wearing Runny Drink Podcast gear, yes, which was fantastic. And then we had our friends Greg and Christy, who are also local. They mm-hmm. they joined our team yes. late and came up, and we so we had a, a group of six. And when you got a big group like that, I don't want to call that a big group. It's a big group for us. You, we you love a big it. group like that. We had to really, really pick apart the course and figure out what our strategy was going to be <laughs> to handle this this intense running experience and and what we decided was we were going to walk it we did (laughs) because the 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 groups were were large now i i will 
give a caveat here. Our group of six did not stick together. No, Everybody no. Everybody was at their own pace. Greg and Christy are machines. Machines. Yes. I, 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 They're I, great. I know that it was a walking pace because I could tell by their gait. I am amazed at how fast they move. They are like... They uh, Bob like, is 65 and dopey. Yeah. And he does all of the Disney races and just, he is a machine too. Yes. They remind me of him. Yes. I saw Greg's hat in the distance. He wore a hat for sun deflection and then I lost them. They, they got yeah, way ahead of us. Yeah, we totally lost them. And then so. I'm, my legs are too long for you to keep up with me. So you and Aiden and Kelly were hanging together. Yeah, we kind of hopscotched because I wanted to stop and take photos of all those quotes. Uh, the quotes. And then there and may then, have been one or two cute dogs on the course. Oh, we can't. It's impossible not to stop for cute dogs. They also had a they had a dog charity at the at the adorable at the beginning slash end at the area out there at Ulele, and they had dogs for adoption. And these these little black lab puppies oh. were, almost came home. They were so cute. Oh my gosh, so cute. Yeah. So there there's a lot of cute dogs on the course. Yes. So. We decided we were going to attack it by walking it. Yeah. And one thing I do like about this race, they mm-hmm. they know what you're dealing with. We had had rain. Mm-hmm. The rain, I think, helped knock down some of the the steaminess. Yes. There was a breeze this year, which Thank we, have, goodness. we have not had in previous years. So some happy. Previous years. So happy So for when that. there's a breeze, it's nice. But- When there's not, you're running right along the river and the river is just giving off the steam. This one can be a bit, a bit challenging in terms of the humidity. Because you don't know what you're going to get. At the start line, they have big buckets or buckets, drink. Like coolers, coolers. mobile coolers, and they're, rolling and they're, coolers. They're handing out bottles of water at the start line for this race. Mm-hmm. So they're like, take a water, take a water, take a water. So everybody. everybody. Take a water. And then at the mile and a half at the turnaround point. They're giving away bottles of water, bottles too. Of water Those 16 well. ounce bottles of water. And so we took advantage of that. Yeah. And it was perfect. And so I just, yeah. At, so it was kind of like having two water stops in a sense. It, very much so. Yeah. And when you're able to start the race with a bottle of water in hand. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they had volunteers at all along the course to sp- spot puddles, that flooding, that. You wanted to avoid. There were a couple of little spots, nothing major. There's only one point in this race where you have to cross a street because of the way the river walk continues um, around like a train track. Exactly. And you have to go up and over a train track and then back down onto the river walk. Mm -hmm. And at that point, they have Tampa PD. They're doing traffic control. Nice. Super group. Volunteers there as well. The volunteers were great. Everybody's clapping and cheering you on. Yeah. The the course takes you basically, I, I want to say it takes you east along the river. Really, you're heading from Eulalie all the way down towards what basically is the last overpass before you get to the Tampa Convention Center. Ah. When you hit that USF uh-huh. statue, the bull statue thing that we turned around at, mm-hmm. you go kind of like a USF courtyard. Yeah, it's it's sponsored by the University of South Florida. Mm-hmm. You're right there at the at the convention center, which is where we have the expo for the for the Gasparilla. Gasparilla. So it's a mile and a half out. You turn around, mile and a half back, mm-hmm. and the whole time you just got this beautiful view, boaters and paddle boarders on the Hillsborough River. You've, I love the view of the University of Tampa. I it's think beautiful. I think it's one of the it's most beautiful. beautiful structures in 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 the city. Mm-hmm. And getting to see that the whole time, it was just it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I don't really think I was not missing a medal or any kind of like bling. I I wasn't really motivated to do this one for obvious reasons. I wasn't bling motivated. No, and and you get a great shirt, and you mm-hmm. get to do something really great for Moffat. That's mm-hmm. the that's the reward here. Yeah, so. and and it doesn't hurt that at the end of this race, oh. when you get back to you lately, oh. they greet you. You get the cheerleaders from the Buccaneers right there yeah. at, the, at the finish line. Yeah, then you can saunter right on over to the buffet line. Oh. 
And they have breakfast ready for you with scrambled sausage. eggs and sausage and yogurt and fruit and orange, orange juice, juice and, and granola bars and just, yeah. And you could sit in the courtyard and chat with people and just, uh, and Richard was there until the very end. And he was talking everybody up. He was working the crowd. He's such, he, he is the unofficial mayor of Tampa. Richard Gonsmart, it just, um, just, he had his family there too. And what a tie to the community. What rich history, such a wonderful man. He asked, I I stopped him before we even started the race, the, the walk jog race, Mm -hmm. the event. And I said, "I I just want you to know that because of you, my dad got amazing treatment at Moffitt. What you do really matters. And I thank you. Yeah. And he said, what's your dad's name? I'll pray for him. Yeah. He's such a nice guy, and and it's just incredible to. He remembered see this. us from Mem's race too. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, and we 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 just love being able to support this event, and it was a it was a great time. <laughs> Kelly and her kids had to to jet afterwards to mm-hmm. Orlando for for a day of fun. And we ended up hanging back in Tampa with Christy and Greg. <gasps> but I just have to say, because you mentioned Kelly, I really have to say thank you to her because she brought back for us. She brought to the event to gift to us Old Bay Vodka that we featured on the last Runcation Nation Live. Yes. If you haven't seen that, go check it out on the social media feed. We actually taste the vodka itself. We make a Bloody Mary with it. Bloody Brew. A bloody Brew. Yes. And we cook with it. Really interesting stuff. Yeah. Very versatile. So check that out. And thank you, Kelly. You, you, you were very, very kind in bringing that to us. Yes. And like you said, Christy and Greg, they decided to stay. They were troopers. With us. And suffered through the, the, the food and drink portion. Oh, boy. <laughs> and we're so happy that they did because a Runcation Nation celebration. Is that, could that be a hashtag? It could be. We'll have it to, would be we'll very. We'll have to check with, with our Josh. executive producer in charge of It's a of very hashtags. long, I don't know. Okay. But we decided that while we were there at your, we, we Reached out to Tim Shackton and we were like, hey, is there any possibility we could you could squeeze us in? He's like, absolutely. And he he did us a solid. We were able to get in at you lately for lunch. And I love going to this place because when you go there, you lately is you the building is a is an old waterworks in Tampa and they've reclaimed this beautiful brick structure and the interior is this interesting mixture of modern and industrial. And then they've got all of the things that inspire the cuisine and they, they are referencing Native American influences and Florida fresh ingredients in so in the food there. There's a reason that we have had this place on the show before. Yeah, I, I and and you just have to when you visit your favorite podcasters <laughs> and you say, "Where should we meet?" You might go to one of the places we've talked about. For, and you lately and, would be and if you're visiting us in Tampa, yeah, top of the a, list. There's a high likelihood we're going to do something there. So we ended up, we got there. They had the regular menu, the the whole regular menu, and we ordered a sampling of things off that regular menu. I ended up appetizer uh, for, for the table. We ended up getting the the char grilled oysters, which I think are the phenomenal shining star on their menu. They're just so good. I've tried to replicate them here. I've gotten close, but their oysters they're fantastic. are so good. I, they're, they're alligator hush puppies, which are just these deep fried balls of, of cornmeal and gator meat and spices. And they've got these delicious horseradish sauces, sauce, like a horseradish kind of thing. And then a, 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 a dattle pepper kind yes. of sauce. That's got a little sweetness to it. 
the okra fries, which oh. are, are basically sliced okra that are deep fried and then no drizz- slime, no slime drizzled with, with lime juice. Mm-hmm. They're so Salt tasty and house made ketchup. Yeah. We got a sampling of those things. And then on the table, they because have- we did have to wait. Just, we, we just had to wait for them to open. So we were hungry. We had earned it. We did. We did. Okay. It was indulgent and, and, and we, celebratory day. We also didn't have breakfast ahead of the race. That leaders. is so true. Let's be clear. That is, and we might we had a little bit at the after celebration, but we were we were waiting for this. This mm-hmm. is worth the wait. <laughs> so we ended up getting the Father's Day menu. Oh. And they had four items on the Father's Day menu. Oh. The, f- oh. the first is their uh, is their appetizer, and they it's called a crab ravigote. I guess. And this is what you ordered. Lump crab meat tossed in fresh lemon and horseradish sauce. Mm, 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 mm. Served on toasted bread with herbs and fried capers. Yum. Hey, the crab meat. Sweetness. Brininess of the sea. Lemon. What else goes with seafood? Come on, especially crab. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter, hot or cold. The horseradish just added a bite, and it wasn't really overwhelming heat. No, it was very mild. It wasn't like, you know how sometimes when you have sushi and you do wasabi and it just, like, your entire nose is fried? That's, yes. Not like that. It is. It was almost like a lobster roll salad-esque lump crab meat with, with all of the accoutrement tossed and... The toasted bread. So it was, it was cold. Mm-hmm. It was cold. And, but it was the fried capers added that salty and crunchy note. A little pop. And then the breadiness of the toast points. It was perfect after having traditional favorites from the appetizers mm-hmm. that we had to have. This was a, a perfect entree for me, really, yeah. even though it was an appetizer on the menu. Yeah. Special menu. I thought it was fantastic. Yes. I went a little bigger. I actually got the entree. Uh, actually, there there were two versions of the short rib entree at our table. Mm-hmm. I ended up getting the Father's Day special. Greg got the one that's from their regular menu. And the, both of them are. And they do an amazing job <sighs> with their short rib. I, amazing. And mine had a very Southern influence that spoke to me. So mm. this is described as follows. Pimento cheese, fried green tomatoes, bourbon bacon jam, tobacco onions, root vegetable demi glace. The whole thing was amazing. Yeah. So you get this wonderful base of fried green tomatoes, the the bourbon bacon jam, and then the the short rib is on top of it. Ah! The short rib's fork tender. The pimento cheese is... Caviar of the, the caviar South. Caviar of the South. So you get this this cheesy, tart creaminess. You get uh, the tartness and the crunchiness from the fried green tomatoes. The bourbon bacon jam. The bourbon doesn't come through so much, but the you, sweetness. You get a little bit of smoky. sweetness and smokiness. And then the smoky and the salty from the bacon. It, everything worked so well together. The crunch of the onions. Yeah. Because and I'm not I I know I'm interjecting, but I I had the appetizer. She might have, she might have had her fork on my plate I, a couple I, of times. Maybe more than more than twice. Amazing combinations. They know how to do short rib. Oh yeah. 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 So the, their it, short rib is one of the best things on their regular menu. Greg had his. <laughs> Uh, he he destroyed it. The mashed um, potatoes, the sauce, mm-hmm. everything. Like so, just this kind of twist is great. So if there's a special short rib, I say get it. But if there's not, and you love short rib, don't miss what's on their regular menu. Right, absolutely. Mm. Now on their Father's Day special, they had a chocolate creme brulee as an offering. Sure, we opted not to get that, and we opted for dessert. One dessert for the table. Oh, yes. To share. Four spoons. Uh, four spoons. Four spoons. And that is their bourbon bacon ice fried ice cream. Oh, and it has a Knob Creek demi-glace. It, or not, or creme, uh, creme anglaise. anglaise. 
So see, I'm you, still on the short ribs. So you get the fried <laughs> ice cream that is it, it is bourbon bacon ice cream. They roll mm. it in cornflakes. Then you have that. You know, that's I guess fried, and then Ugh. and then they put it in this pool of creme anglaise with a Knob mm. Creek Knob Creek caramel that they Ugh. they basically like weave in there weave in there it's and artistry it is beautiful and yeah. then this thing comes out and people are and then they sh- uh, they shove a, a piece of candied bacon in in, in the ice cream I'm so like, this thing comes out and oh. christy and greg are eyeballing it and i'm like no, no no you try it and i see the faces that they start making when perfect they, they're eating it perfect they're like this is ridiculous and like yeah that that Come dessert, on. that dessert's insane it's so good i that ice cream is it has pieces of bacon in the ice cream. And it's just, it's vanilla, like bacon, go, or just magic. Yeah. It's magic. So that's the appetizer entree desserts. Their fourth item on the Father's Day special was a flight of whiskeys. Now, by the way, we were sitting next to, as, as it turned <gasps> out, we, we ended up, we had an so hour, exciting. an hour or so to kill. So we ended up going over to the uh, armature works, armature works yeah. for our buddy brew. Mm-hmm. And, and we came back, we ended up getting sat right next to Richard Gonsmart and his family. And as it turns out, there was a connection with Greg and, oh, and Richard. And so fantastic. Greg's dad went to school with Richard and they knew each other. Oh. So, Nice little a little connection there. Great. But we noticed as we we're looking on the on the menu, the fourth item is the the Van Winkle whiskey flight, and it's full ounce pours from three Pappy Van Winkle offerings: a ten year, a twelve year, and a thirteen year. Woo! And we noticed a couple of those flights go to Richard's table and we're like, Oh, do we recommend? And they're like, Oh yes. <laughs> so we ended up getting that as well, but we're going to talk mm. about that in depth as a patron exclusive. So patrons, Definitely. you've got something special coming your way. Yes. We can't thank Tim Shackton enough brewmaster at Eulalie. Oh, can I say something? Oh yeah! Since you mentioned him, yeah, he's experimenting, and uh, yes. while he's there, he's like, "You got you guys got to try our our new beer." They were doing a Brett beer, please do variation of their wedding beer, which we have talked about on the show. And Delicious. Have, if you are into Brett beers, which are the Brettanomyces, it's got a unique flavor profile, all of its own mm. wild fermentation type beers. There's some bitterness, hints of bitterness there, and sour. Some of, some of the, the farmhouse style flavors. Yeah. I think that you will really like this because they go, they take that as a, the the wedding beer, which is a fruited ale as the base. And then they, they do it as a Brett Give it a shot if you're oh. if you're into that style of beer. If that's oh. a, that's a brand new one on their on their menu. Also, they have a brand new Hefeweizen. Hefeweizen that they're doing. Yeah, highly recommend. Quite tasty. We love, but you you and I we love that the bubblegum flavors of Hefe. I do. Yeah, the I'm banana a, I, clove. I, I, I like Hefeweizens. I like when you get into Belgians. I like the, those even stronger flavors like that. Yeah, you can't go wrong. But uh, yeah, Tim. Like you said. Thank you so much. That's and such a great job. It was amazing to be just feet away from Richard Gonsmart, who has done so much for the Tampa community, for Moffitt, who is a cancer survivor himself and is just lives every day in gratitude. Yeah. Loved that man. Loved his loved seeing his family, his wife, cancer survivor herself. Just uh, I I can't I hope I wasn't fangirling too much <laughs> no. and I allowed them to enjoy their meal. You did. So happy Father's Day. It was an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to sit next to you and for Tim to take the selfie that you see in the album artwork, in the episode artwork, and just it's uh, I I can't what a great time. I can't tell you what an amazing start to father's day it was and it was great to go home to my dad and spend the evening and have a special dinner from the columbia restaurant that we brought home to him and it's all courtesy of the columbia restaurant group and what what 
this man does f- to help support Moffat and, and a special thank you to Moffat for everything. There you go. So all this talk of running and eating has got, I've worked up quite a Are thirst. Are you thirsty? I am. Yes. And oh. you know, when, when you're in Tampa and you're wanting a cup of delicious coffee, mm. We've been told by several people, John Schroeder being one of them. Yes, that, patron of uh, the show. Buddy Brew is one that we absolutely had to try. And we've been trying to work it in and get, get, there. get there. We finally had the opportunity because we had that downtime between the race and when you lately open. Open. Yeah. So we walked on over and we thought to ourselves, okay. self, let's get some coffee. Runcation Nation crew. So we did. We moved in mass over to Buddy Brew right there uh, in the middle of the Armature Works. And again, the Armature Works, yeah. again, a big old industrial building that's been reclaimed. It's it's this beautiful old architecture with some of the original fixtures that have been left in place. Like it's a door all, and pipes and things. Yeah, that are- it, it has this really neat industrial look and brick, exposed brick everywhere, steel beams. <sighs> then you get... This this grown up food court kind of thing where you've got yeah. bars and restaurants and and walk up food locations and it's just really cool and mm-hmm. the, and some really nice sit down restaurants in these places as well. There are a lot of places we could we could do an entire series of of food and drink mm-hmm. just at the Armature Works and they have a, and we've a, been there before. Yes. Yes. We, they have a really nice space where they hold demos too, like cooking demos, wine tasting. Yes. You can rent it if you want. Yeah. To do something like if, like if we wanted to have like a Runcation Nation cooking night and yeah. we would be able to do something and film it and all that. Mm. Yeah. It's basically a studio kitchen that you can rent. It's great. The tables are what? Like the, the butcher block. Oh, great. Butcher block and steel tables. Yeah. It's, it's so. really cool. And the and the bartenders at the the bar as you enter the Armature Works, that was great. There, there may have been a there may have been a early morning cocktail at Where, one point. I we may know. talk about that with our our patrons as Maybe, well. Yeah. So just saying, <laughs> patrons, keep keep an eye out. But this is all about coffee. This is a spotlight on coffee at Buddy Brew. Exactly. And what I like about Buddy Brew is that. It is all over Tampa and in Southwest Florida. Like there's a location at at Kennedy. What is that? Kennedy Boulevard? Yes, Kennedy Boulevard. Kennedy Boulevard. There's one in Hyde Park, which is upscale shops. There's a movie theater there. The Oxford Exchange. Mm -hmm. And there's one Bay to Bay. And then Sarasota Park Tower. And then, of course, Armature Works, where we got... Our buddy brew. And they had a, a drink that caught every single person's eye in our group. We had to do it. There and, may be footage of it. And we were debating this because of the name. We, we yeah. see this thing called the Buddy Brew Screw. No description on, no. The, on the menu. It was just like a chalkboard menu. And we noticed that they do appear to have like a beer and wine offering. Oh, they have more there. than that. Listen, cup of brew, bolt Cold brew on tap, bolt, cold brew in cans, cold brew floats, box of brew, a red eye, an espresso, americano, cortado, cappuccino, affogato, latte, a flat white. You could get juice, hot chocolate. It is full service. Yeah, it's full service. But we were trying to decide if this Buddy Brew screw had vodka in it. Like, is it is like, it a, like screwdriver? a screwdriver? We yeah. were like, what is the deal here? And I'm like, there's no way for $6.50 that this has alcohol in it. No way. Uh. But, but the name had us all intrigued. So we, as a group, we go up to the to the young lady who's there and we're like, what? tell us what this is. Yeah, tell us. And she was very excited about it. She actually ended up doing a... Doing it with us. Doing it with us. Enjoying one with us. It's, and they had some really good looking food there too. And pounds of coffee, both whole bean and and ground, I think, to take home. Mm -hmm. But the Buddy Brew Screw is actually a double shot of espresso served with a side of grapefruit juice and a spoon of salt. Yeah. So she explained it to us. She said, you do this kind of like you're doing a tequila shot. So you'll have the salt the espresso 
and then you chase it with the grapefruit juice. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is apparently, <laughs> as it was explained to us, there there are enzymes in grapefruit juice that intensify the caffeine effect from espresso. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we'll give it a shot. Mm-hmm. So they, and she, she says, I'll do it with you. And she sets it out. Like you're doing, it literally looked like we were doing shots at a bar. Really? It, except for like in little paper cups. Yeah. Paper cups. Yeah. But she had them all set up yeah. and, and ready to rock. And she's showing us how to do it. Mm-hmm. And we got video. Yes. <laughs> and I, mm, it was interesting to see her do like she brews the double espresso and immediately puts a little ice cube in it. Oh, to cool it off so that yeah. she'd be able to do, to do it as a shot immediately. Oh yeah. So it was interesting to see yeah, yeah. see them do that. What do you think? We were there and and it's like you have this salt on your hand and then then you lick the salt, you do the shot, and then you have the grapefruit juice as the chaser. Uh, I definitely felt bonus caffeine heading into our meal at you lately. Okay. That's just me. Did I, did they go together? How, how was it? I, by the time I had the shots of espresso that I just, does salt go with coffee? Some people would argue you should put a little bit of salt in your brew basket when you're brewing coffee. Why? Uh, to to curb the bitterness. Some people oh, say. Oh, like if it's a darker roast or something some like that? Some people say. Yeah. I don't agree with that generally. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so did you like it? I did. Would you do it again? Yes. Okay. I would. I didn't ever know that piece of it. I, I had never fruit. heard that about the what grapefruit. the grapefruit does. I had never. I don't heard know. That. That's I. I just trusted the word, and absolutely, these are the experts. So, does it work? I don't know. I, I did it have a placebo kind of effect or whatever. Maybe. What, what did you think? Even if it was a placebo effect, the placebo effect is real and it and it can cause measurable ch- results. Um, <laughs> what did I think? The espresso was very good. I, I did like the espresso. I am generally not a grapefruit fan for Juices. grapefruit juice. Right. It's, um, bitter. it's bitter. This very much tasted like breakfast. It was like coffee and, and mm-hmm. grapefruit because I grew up, my, my parents used to eat grapefruit at breakfast all the time because we had a grapefruit tree out back. Did you? I did not. I don't. I didn't like because I never as a kid. did. Wasn't a huge fan. I'd have to eat it sometimes. I'd get made to, but I. Oh. Would, it's not something I, I. I will seek out even to this day. Okay. Usually, okay. The exception, of course, is when we go to the Brown Derby. <gasps> grapefruit martini to get the grapefruit martini and or the, the grapefruit, grapefruit cake. cake. Yes. So that's the exception. Okay. That said. It was good, and I do think, like, immediately I didn't feel anything. Immediately I thought the taste, I'm like, yeah, it tastes like coffee and grapefruit juice. I do think that within a couple of minutes, I was feeling the espresso more quickly than I would normally. Yeah. So I I think there might be something to that. It wasn't so pronounced that you... you, You're like, oh my gosh, I'm seeing colors. I've had, yeah, or I'm hearing colors. Like those memes, like those memes, those coffee memes. Yeah, it wasn't like that. And it wasn't like you had pre-workout and and you you were, were, your heart's thumping out of your chest. But I think that I, 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 like you said, I think I felt it heading into our our lunch. Would you do it again? Yeah, I would. It it, it was good. And uh, for six fifty, for what you're getting, I think it's it's. It was a full glass of grapefruit juice. Yes, you're you're getting a good value for your money there. And a double shot, and just and and, you know the entertainment value of an employee doing it with you. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So I I look forward to going back to Buddy Brew and seeing what else we can try on their menu. I'd love to get them on the show. I think they'd be a lot of fun to talk Mm -hmm. to. And again, the location was fantastic there. We should try one of the other locations next time. 
Definitely. Phenomenal. All in all, great trip to Tampa. Thank you to Team Runcation Nation who came out to support the Moffitt Cancer Center and Richard's Run in this 10th year, helping them get to that million dollar mark. Uh, Just thank you. Great achievement. Thank you to everybody. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned next week for more accomplishing, exploring, and indulging Perhaps Runcation Recaps. Yeah, you and, never know. Yeah, and by the way, if you want to be part of those Runcation Recaps, let us know. All of you have experienced Runcations, and you've probably been to some places that we haven't had a chance to do yet, and maybe we need to put on our list. Email us if you want to share a great option for accomplishing, exploring, and indulging. That's info at runeatdrink.net. That's info at runeatdrink.net. Let us make you Runcation Nation famous and give us the goods on the food and beverage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In addition to the race experience. I'm all about it. So really, this is the first episode in what is the start of season seven. So thank you for joining us for the last six years on the show. We couldn't have done it without you, Runcation Nation. We're so grateful. We celebrate our community every day. Cheers to all of you for listening on your long run, your commute to work, around the house, or wherever you are. We are so excited about year number seven, starting with this episode. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. Stay safe and well, and we will accomplish, explore, and indulge with you really soon. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We're having another great year thanks to your support. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Run, Eat, Drink Podcast. And on Twitter, we're Run, Eat, Drink Pod. You can also give us a call at 941-677-2733 or send us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. Visit our website at runeatdrink.net and click on the subscribe link so you don't miss a minute. Find out how you can support the show at patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast. Accomplish, explore, and indulge right along with us. We'll talk to you next time.